Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about short run costs and short run cost curves. If after watching this video you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the Total Review Booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into the content. Now entrepreneurs go into business to make a profit and one of the key aspects of making a profit is determining a business's costs and that's what we're doing here is looking at the cost curves for particular businesses. So first we need to understand the difference between variable costs and fixed costs. Whether you are producing zero units of output or 100,000 units of output, the fixed costs are going to be constant. Examples of fixed costs are land or rent, also the loan payments of physical capital. Fixed costs are often called overhead. But we also have variable costs. Variable costs are going to increase as output is increased. If a firm is producing zero units of output, the variable costs are going to be zero. Raw materials such as electricity that is used in a factory or taco shells and meat that are used in a taco stand, as well as labor. Those are all variable inputs. And as a result, the payments for those resources are variable costs. And if a firm pays more for a particular resource when they produce more of an item, then that resource is going to be a variable cost in the production process. Let's take a look at some numbers so we understand this. Here we have different quantities of output in the Q column there, and FC stands for fixed costs. You'll notice that zero units of output have a fixed cost of $10, and three units of output has a fixed cost of $10 as well. Even six units of output has the same cost of $10. But VC is the variable cost, and that is going to increase with more units produced. At zero units of output, we have zero dollars of variable cost. At three units of output, we have $24 of variable cost. And at six units of output, we have $90 worth of variable cost. And so those variable costs increase as output increases. Now, since this is microeconomics, of course, we're going to have a graph for it. We are going to have P or price on that Y axis and Q or quantity on the X axis and our fixed costs with all units of output are going to be constant. That means we have a horizontal line for that fixed cost curve. Now the variable costs on the other hand tend to have a shape that looks something like this. They increase at an increasing rate, then increase at a decreasing rate, and eventually increase at an increasing rate once again. And as we will find out later in this video, that's because the marginal cost of production decreases because of specialization and then eventually increases because of diminishing marginal returns. Now we're on to total cost. When it comes to cost of production, we have both implicit costs and explicit costs. And you've already learned about those back in unit one. But in this unit, we're focusing on the fixed costs and the variable costs. There are implicit and explicit variable costs as well as implicit and explicit fixed costs. But you're going to add all of those costs, both the fixed ones and the variable ones all together, and that gives us our total costs of production for a particular quantity of output. When we go back to the numbers chart here, we're going to add a new column of TC, that's our total costs, and we are going to add the fixed costs to the variable costs to get our total cost. So at zero units of output, we have $10 of total cost. You'll notice at zero units of output, the total cost and the fixed cost are always going to be equal here. At one unit of output, it's $18 worth of total cost, $24 of total cost for two units of output, and there are the other total costs of production for different units of output. And getting back to the graph, we're going to add in a total cost curve. We're going to take that constant fixed cost and add it to the variable cost. And that gives us our total cost curve. It's the same shape as the variable cost curve. It's just moved up the amount of the fixed cost. And while so far they haven't asked you to draw these graphs on the AP microeconomics exam, they've definitely asked students to identify and analyze these curves. Next, we've got our marginal cost of production. And hopefully you already understand that marginal means change in the total. Here, we're looking at the change in the total cost of production. Essentially, the definition is the cost of producing the last unit of output. It's the change in the total cost divided by the change in quantity produced. Most of the time, the increase in production will just be one unit. And as a result, we're just looking at the change in the total cost for producing that next unit of output. So over on the numbers chart again, we have our total cost of production. Our total cost goes from $10 to $18 for that first unit produced, and that means our marginal cost is $8. The total cost increases from $18 to $24 for that second unit, 
And so that second unit of output has a marginal cost of six. The third unit has a marginal cost of $10, and there's the rest of the marginal cost. Each unit, we're looking at the change in the total cost for producing that unit. And let's get back to the graph here. And as we saw on the numbers, we have two parts of the marginal cost curve. At low units of output, marginal costs are decreasing. And that's because of specialization. When that marginal cost is at its minimum point, diminishing marginal returns sets in and marginal costs begin to rise. And it's because of diminishing marginal returns that we have the upward sloping portion of that marginal cost curve. And if we look back at the numbers here, we can come up with our variable costs when we look at the marginal cost numbers. The variable cost is the sum of the marginal cost for every unit produced so far. So our variable cost starts at zero with zero units of output. And if our total costs increase by $8 with the first unit of output, that means our marginal cost and variable cost will both be $8 for that first unit of output. The second unit of output increases the total cost by $6, which means our marginal cost is $6. And the variable cost is the sum of the $6 for the second unit along with the $8 of the first unit, bringing it to $14 for the variable cost. That third unit of output increases total cost and variable cost by $10, bringing our total variable cost to $24. And if we keep on going, we can see those numbers there are the variable costs of production all the way up to producing six units. So not only is the variable cost the sum of each unit's marginal cost, but the marginal cost is also going to be the change in the variable cost, along with the change in the total cost, as we saw before. The next thing we're going to look at is the average variable cost. The average of anything is that thing divided by the quantity. In this case, it's the variable cost divided by the quantity produced. So at one unit of output, the average variable cost is $8. At two units of output, the average variable cost is $7. It's the 14 divided by two. At three units of output, it's 24 divided by three, which is $8. And if we keep doing the math, we have those average variable cost numbers for each of these units of output. When it comes to graphing the average variable cost, it's going to decrease until it intersects the marginal cost curve, and then it's going to increase. And when you graph it out, the minimum of that average variable cost curve is going to intersect the marginal cost curve. And that's because the marginal cost is the cost of the next unit. Whenever the marginal cost is below the average, it's going to pull the average down. As soon as the marginal cost is above the average, it lifts the average up. That's the mathematical reason why the average variable cost is at its minimum where it intersects the marginal cost curve. Next, we're going to take a look at the average total cost. And again, averages are the total divided by the quantity. So we take the total cost and divide by the quantity produced. At one unit of output, our average is $18. It's the $18 divided by one unit. $24 divided by two units of output is $12 of average total cost. $34 divided by the three units of output is $11.30 for our average total cost. And there are the average total costs for each of our other units produced. And getting back to the graph, we have our average total cost is again going to intersect the marginal cost at its minimum point. And when the marginal cost is below the average total cost, that average total cost is falling. And when the marginal cost is above the average total cost, the average total cost is rising. One more key point you need to know is that at the minimum of that average total cost curve, we find the productively efficient quantity labeled Q1 here. Productive efficiency means we are producing at the lowest average cost, and we find that at the minimum of the average total cost curve, where it intersects the marginal cost. So productive efficiency is found where ATC equals MC. Next, we have the average fixed cost. And just like before, we're taking the fixed costs and dividing by the quantity here. At one unit of output, the average fixed cost is $10. At two units of output, the average fixed cost is $5. At three units of output, it's $3.33. And at four units of output, we have $2.50 worth of fixed costs. You'll notice that the average fixed cost consistently decreases as more units are produced. And that's because we're taking the fixed costs which don't change with output and distributing them over a larger number of units. And so when you graph out the average fixed costs, as more units are produced, the average fixed cost is going to get closer and closer and closer to that x-axis, but never intersect it. So whether it's on the numbers or the graph, the fixed costs are going to decrease as quantity increases. 
Next, we're going to talk about changing cost curves. Costs do change, and when they change, it's going to shift the curves that we've just looked at. If there's a change in fixed costs, like a lump sum tax or lump sum subsidy, or some overhead cost change like rent, that is going to move the average total cost up with an increase in fixed costs or down with a decrease in fixed costs. The only one of those three curves that moves will be the ATC. And that's because the average fixed cost, remember, is the gap between the ATC and the AVC. So we just increase that gap with a change in fixed costs. If we have a change in variable costs, like a per unit tax, per unit subsidy, or we have a change in technology that lowers your per unit cost of production, that is going to shift the average total cost, average variable cost, and marginal cost, upward with an increase in cost and downward with a decrease in cost. All of those curves are going to move, and that's because we're changing the variable cost, which is the marginal cost and the variable cost, and since any cost is changing, the total cost must also move. Now, finding all of the values of these different costs is something you are likely to see on your exam. If we find out that the total cost for zero units produced is $10, then we know that the fixed costs of production are also going to be $10, and that will be true for every unit produced. We also know that for zero units of output, the variable cost is going to be $0. If we find out that the first unit produced costs a total of $18, from that, we can figure out that the marginal cost is $8 for that first unit because it's the change in the total cost for that first unit. And if we find out that the second unit has a marginal cost of $6 while the third has a marginal cost of 10, from these marginal costs, we can figure out the variable costs of each of these units. The variable cost for the first unit and the marginal cost for the first unit are going to be equal. For that second unit, we're going to add the marginal cost of the first and the second together to get $14. And for the third unit, the variable cost is going to be the marginal cost of the first, second, and third units, bringing the total to $24 for that variable cost. Of course, we can add our variable cost and fixed cost together to get our total cost of $24 for our second unit. And to find the total cost of the third unit, we can add the marginal cost of $10 to come up with a total cost of $34 for that third unit. If we want to find the average fixed cost, we just take that fixed cost and divide by the quantity to come up with our average fixed cost values. But if we are given the average variable cost and the average total cost, we can also find the average fixed cost by finding the difference between the two. ATC minus AVC gives us our AFC. We can also multiply the average variable cost by the quantity as well as the ATC by the quantity to find our variable cost and total cost values. Finding the values of all the different cost curves can feel tricky at first. Just make sure you practice with the game that you'll see at the end of this video, and then you'll be ready for your exam. We can also find values on the graphs as well. If we are looking for the average cost of production for our quantity produced here labeled Q1, then from that quantity, just head up to the curves above. The average total cost of Q1 is found at the average total cost curve above at P2, and the average variable cost is found at the average variable cost curve above Q1 as well, found at P1 right there. And we have the marginal cost of Q1 at P0 there. And even though the average fixed cost is not on the graph here, you can find it by looking at the gap between the average total cost and the average variable cost. So here we can find the average fixed cost for Q1 by taking P2 and minusing P1, because the average fixed cost will always be the gap between the average total cost and the average variable cost for a particular quantity. Now we can also find total cost curves here as well, because the total of anything is the average of that thing times the quantity. We have the quantity here labeled Q1, and the price of the average variable cost is P1. Multiply that average of P1 times the quantity of Q1, which is the area of that rectangle there, and that will give you the total variable cost of Q1. The average total cost of Q1 is there at P2, and so we can find the total cost by multiplying Q1 times P2. And that red rectangle there, if you calculate that area, that would be our total fixed costs of production. And there you have it. That is what you need to know about cost curves for a firm. If you're ready to practice this, head over to reviewecon.com and play the cost curve calculation game. It'll really help you when this stuff shows up on your exam. If you still need more help after that, pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics or macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.